So the first part is multiple choice. And so we're going to be looking at these graphs of F, G, and H. And so the question says, true or false, the value of N is less than one. So I'm looking over here for the value of N, and that would be here. And so that N is the initial value of my function h of x. In other words, that's the value of h when x is 0. So if we think of this, h of 0 is equal to n times m to the 0. Well, m to the 0 is 1. So h of 0 is n. So that's this point here. And I can see that that point is above the x-axis. And it happens here at this tick mark right there. And then I can see that um, the function e to the x, but I, the thing is I don't know how far apart those tick marks are. So that's a little bit of a problem. Um, but I can see that the function e to the x is um, is graphed here, right? And so I can use that as kind of a way to measure what the scale is on my graph. And so I know that this value right here, this y value right here, is the function f of zero. f of zero is e to the zero. But f of zero is, so e to the zero is equal to one. So this red dot right there is at one. And so what that means is that this y coordinate for the green dot is less than one. So the correct answer is a true. Okay, so that makes sense. It's got to do with um, the scaling, and we don't know what the scaling is until we investigate that function e to the x. Okay, so if it takes 10 years for an investment to double, how long will it take for the investment to increase by 50%? Um, so what we want to do is, um, so we know that we need to find, what we need to find is the um, rate, the rate. So here's our model, p equals p naught, one plus the rate to the t. And so what I know is that when t is equal to 10, this value is twice that value. So I can plug in those numbers. So I have two p naught, is equal to p naught 1 plus r to the 10. And I can use that to solve for r. And this problem is, is a little bit deceptive. Oh, actually, because if you, if you think about how exponential growth works, you'd be able to guess the answer. But I'll show you how to um, find it mathematically, and then we'll talk about why we could have done that without doing the computation. So let's divide both sides by p naught. So we get 2 is equal to 1 plus r to the tenth, and then I can the tenth root of both sides, so 2 to the 1 tenth is equal to 1 plus r, and then I can subtract 1. 2 to the 1 tenth um, minus 1, which is... Point zero seven one seven, And so that is the rate. And so what I want to know is how long will it take for the investment to increase by 50%. So that's saying that it's 1.5 P naught is equal to P naught times 1 plus point zero one seven one seven, And we want to solve that for a T. So then I can... Um, Divide both sides by p naught and take the natural log. I get natural log of 
is equal to t times the natural log of 1.7017. And then I can divide that over, and I got t is equal to natural log of 1.5 divided by natural log of 1.0717. And that gives me 5.855. And so the answer is more than five years. And you can think about that if you know about exponential functions because you can think about the shape of a graph. If it is an exponentially increasing function, you know that it will be concave up, right? And so if you know that, um, that here is where the function is at time zero, and you're looking for the doubling time. If you know the doubling time is 10 years, so this is p-naught, this is 2 p-naught, then the question is how long for it to go 1 and a half. So that would be here. So you're looking for that value. And you're wondering if it's greater than or less than 5. Well, it's going to be more than 5 because of the shape of the graph. Because the graph is concave up, it's going to grow faster towards the end of the 10-year um, period than it grows at the beginning of the 10-year period. So you know it's going to be more than five years by reasoning from the shape of the graph. Um, so you can think about that either way. Uh, number three says, suppose the amount of a radioactive substance is given by that function... Um, what is the continuous yearly decay rate? And so what we want to do is that we know this is equal to 1 plus r. So um, we want to set that equal to e to the r. So we want to set 0 0.895 equal to e to the r and solve for the rate. And so we take the natural log of both sides. We get r is equal to the natural log of 0.895, which is negative 0.1109. So this is the answer, C. Now, how did I know to do that? Well, because I'm comparing the two models that I have. I have this model, P naught, 1 plus R to the T, and that's going to be equal to p naught e to the r t. And so this part here is equal to this part here. So if we set those two equal to one another, we can find our different rates. Um, oh, I guess I shouldn't use the same r for them because they're different kinds of rates. I don't remember what kind of uh, letter you used in class, but anyhow. Um, so that's what we want to do. And then... Um, what happens to that function as x goes to negative infinity? And so we would do this from the graph. So use your calculator to graph it. So we'll graph 3 plus 5e e to the x. And we'll graph that. And if I think about that, what is this? Well, 5e to the x is just going to be a steeper version of e to the x. And then this is up 3. And so when I think about this graph, it should be shifted up 3. And then just be kind of a steep version of e to the x. And so that would be the graph. So as x goes to negative infinity, in other words, as we move to the left on the x-axis, the y value is approaching 3. So the function value f of x is going to approach 3 as x goes to negative infinity. So next it says, what is the domain of that function? Well, we want to think about the transformation. So this is shifting to the right 6 units. No, to the left, six units, excuse me. This is shifting to the left, six units. And so, um, so that means we're going to take our function, um, natural log of x, which looks like this, 
and we're going to shift it to the left six units. And so one, two, three, four, five, six. So here at negative six is where that asymptote will be, and the function will look like that. So the um, so the domain should be negative six to infinity, and we don't include that negative six because that's where the asymptote is. Okay, next one, a function f has that domain. What is the domain of h um, if h of x equals that? And so what we want to do is think about the transformations on that function. And I want to focus in on the transformations that will alter the um, X coordinates. So I know that this is a shifting up to, and that is a vertical stretch by three, but um, that doesn't affect the domain because those are just shifting the graph in the vertical direction. So what I want to do is focus in on these transformations inside here because those are the ones that are going to affect the X coordinates. And so what we have here is that that five, this, um, the five here is going to multiply the x x, x coordinates by one over five. And so here when I have this negative 20 comma 15, when I apply that first, um, transformation, it goes to negative 4, 3. And then when I apply this transformation, that goes to the left, 6. And so then I'm going to take these guys and I'm going to subtract 6 from the x coordinates. Um, so negative 4 minus 6 is negative 10, and 3 minus 6 is negative 3. So the correct answer is A. All right, number 7 says that the point negative 2, 6 lies on the graph of a function f. What point graph lies on the graph of h, where h is equal to 2 times f of x plus 5 minus 1? So let's take each of these um, transformations in order. Then we will apply those transformations to our point. So the first thing we want to do is any of our stretches or, or flips. So this 2 here is that, that saying that I'm going to multiply the y coordinates by 2. Um, so what that's going to be a vertical stretch um, by a factor of 2. And then this here is telling me I'm going to shift to the left 5 points. And then this number here is telling me I'm going to go down 1. So I'm going to subtract 1 from the y coordinate. And this is going to say left 5 means I'm going to subtract 5 from the x coordinate. Okay, so I'm starting with the point um, negative 2, 6. And if I apply that first transformation, maybe I'll color code this. First, we're going to do multiplying the y coordinates by 2. So we'll get negative 2, 12. And then we want to do this subtracting y or 5 from the x coordinate. So that gives me negative 7, 12. And then I want to apply this one down 1. So subtract 1 from the y coordinate. So that gives me negative 7, 11. So that is A, is the correct answer. So next it says a function has that domain in that range. A function h has that domain in that range. Find a possible formula for h in terms of f. Okay, so I think it might help to think about what happened to the domain and range. 
So f has this, so let's look at the domain first. So f had that domain and it changed to the domain negative 6, 16. So it looks to me like that the x coordinates were multiplied by 2. And I'm going to write that as 2 over 1. Um, and then if I look at the range, so I the function f had that range, and then the function h has that range, and it looks to me like those y coordinates are three, have gone down by three. So, um, so, so we're going to shift down three units. It doesn't look like there are any flips or anything because I'm noticing that the um, bracket is still on the left and the parentheses are on the right, and so there's no flip going on. It's just a shift um, three units. So, um, so I'm going to say it's the correct answer then is A, because if we wanted an x coordinates to be multiplied by 2 over 1, we'd need to have a 1 over 2 here multiplied by the x on the inside of the function. And then minus 3 would be a shift down 3 units. So the correct answer is A. Okay, the next one says, what is the amplitude of the graph shown at the right? And so I want to look at what the maximum is and the minimum. So the maximum happens at negative 1, and the minimum happens at 5. That's a distance of 4 units. And so the amplitude will be half of that because the amplitude goes from the midline. So the amplitude is 2. And we always write the amplitude in absolute value. So, um, so that's why we're going to have a positive 2 there, even though it looks like it's might be a flipped over or shifted graph. Number 10, suppose f of 1 is 7 and f of 3 is negative 2. What is f of 5 if f is periodic with period 4? Okay, so I think it might help to draw a graph. So f of 1 is 7 and f of 3 is negative 2. And I know the period is 4. So if this is the beginning of my period, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, then at 5 units, I should be back where I started. Um, if it's a periodic function with period 4. So the correct answer should be that the y-coordinate at 5, so f of 5, should be equal to 7. Um, number 11. So what is sine squared for theta equals pi over 6? So if theta is pi over 6, so sine squared of pi over 6 is equal to sine of pi over 6 the whole thing squared. And if I think about what is sine of pi over 6, I can think about my unit circle. And I know that pi over 6 is here on my unit circle, and that the um, x-coordinate is root 3 over 2, and the y-coordinate is 1 half. And so if we're looking at sine, sine is the y-coordinate. And so it will be equal to 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth. The correct answer then is D. Number 12. In which quadrant does the angle 11 pi over 8 lie? Okay, so to do that, I know that my... I know that this is 0 and this is pi, so if I divide pi into 8 equal pieces, that will look like this. Ooh. 
pretend those are equal pieces. Um, so this is pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, 6 pi over 8, 7 pi over 8, 8 pi over 8, which is the same thing as pi. And then keep going. 9 pi over 8. 10 pi over 8, 11 pi over 8. So there's that angle that I'm looking for. And it lies in the first, nope, second, nope, third quadrant. Ooh, wow, why did it do that? Huh, I don't know why it made it look like that. Anyway, it lies in the third quadrant. Oh, I guess I clicked the wrong thing. I'm going to erase that because that looks crazy. Okay, <laughs> anyway, um... Then it says, what is the reference angle for 6 pi over 11? And so I want to think about that. Well, if I divide 0 to pi, if I divide that into um, 11 pieces, well, so halfway would be half of 11 is 5.5. So 6 pi over 11 should be right here, right? And so if I did pi minus 6 pi over 11, that's 11 pi over 11 minus 6 pi over 11. So the leftover should be 5 pi over 11. And then this is 6 pi over 11 because they need to add up to give me 11 pi over 11. So the correct answer for the reference angle is 5 pi over 11. In the following figure, what is the length of segment OA? And so the length of segment OA Okay, so for this one we want to make a right triangle um, here. And I know that this side length here is five units long. Um, and so what I know is that cosine of theta is equal to five over this um, value that we don't know. I'll just call it x. Um, so if I wanted to solve that for x, I could multiply the x over. I'd have x cosine theta equals 5, and then I could divide uh, 5 over cosine theta. Um, so we get that. And so the answer then is a.